Hello everyone. So in our previous topic, we have seen exactly what was a shallow neural network and what was a deep neural network. In today's topic, we are going to continue with some basic differences between these two. Followed by that, we are going to begin with our next topic that is fundamentals of deep learning. So you can see here what all I have taught you about shallow neural networks and deep neural networks. We have now we are now trying to gist down the exact differences between these two. So as I begin with the first one would be the number of the layers. So as discussed shallow neural network is going to have an input layer and an output layer and then you will be having either one or two hidden layers not more than that. Compared to deep neural networks you can have multiple layers of hidden layers right. Now the second one is uh, shallow neural network works best when you have got smaller data set that is when the dimensionality of your data is low and you have and relatively less important feature set that is where you would be using shallow neural network. But then when you have a complex data set and when the training requirement is very high that is deep neural network will be used. It works best when the training set is huge and then you have a complex feature set associated with it. And then uh, shallow neural network and deep neural network third difference is there will be a significant increase in the number of uh, parameters when dealing with complex functions when it comes to shallow neural network. But on the other hand the deep neural network is going to fit the same complex function in a better way and also with a lesser number of parameters. So definitely when you have a complex function and a higher amount of data set then the clear win-win will be to use a deep neural network rather than a shallow neural network. Obviously uh, when I talk about shallow neural network if I talk about hyper parameters okay like the learning rate etc. You have very less number of hyper parameters in a shallow neural network and you have more number of hyper parameters pardon me for the um, spelling uh, you have more number of hyper parameters for deep neural network. So when you have lesser number of hyper parameters in a shallow neural network then definitely you have more chances of overfitting. That is if you have less number of hyper parameters then uh, increased probability of overfitting or poor generalization is possible with a shallow neural network. The same way when I compare it with the deep neural network as I told the number of hyper parameters are more then definitely if I compare it with a shallow neural network it is going to have a lesser overfitted model uh, and you have you are going to have a better control over overfitting as well. And when I call on uh, uh, feature processing then the shallow neural network is going to process the features directly whereas deep neural network is going to extract the features automatically after training I mean along with the training ok. Now when I talk on applications where to use what a shallow neural network will be wonderful to use over simpler task like a simple regression simple prediction and a deep neural network is going to work on more complex applications like computer vision speech recognitions okay signal processing etc all these areas we, we are going to more look into detail where you can use deep neural network. So with all these complex applications it is better to always go for a deep neural network rather than a shallow neural network. So this was an overview about differences between these two. Now moving on to our next topic where we are going to see about fundamentals of deep learning. Uh, in that we are going to chiefly talk about what are the characteristics of deep learning. So when I come here what I am doing is I am trying to compare the traditional machine learning algorithms with these deep learning algorithms. Deep learning algorithms are the algorithms which you are going to implement it over a deep neural network. Now when I compare it a traditional ma machine learning algorithm and uh, uh, shallow neural network also. Uh, for that case modern deep learning algorithm compared to them have got these four major characteristics. One is data volume, second is computing power, third is network scale, fourth is general intelligence. I will quickly brief you on this. So when I talk about data volume when you have a larger amount of data set that is available to you which is more complex in nature where the training size is going to be very very high then at that time it is not suitable to use a machine learning algorithm it will not give you that much accuracy and it will not be like if you use a shallow neural network then the model will be overfitted. So to uh, access uh, 
uh, or to work with certain data set which is very high in size and you have got lot amount of training data available with you then it's better to go for uh, deep neural networks uh, using deep learning algorithms when your data volume is very high and second is computing power obviously uh, deep learning algorithm has got very efficient amount of computing power uh, that is uh, number of floating point operations per second that we call it as flops they are more when compared to any other algorithms um, the third one that i talk about is network scale so scaling of network is possible in a deep learning algorithm when i talk about network scale means how efficiently and how easily i could add up to the number of the layers that are present in my model and scale my network like for an example uh, you have alex net with eight layers and then if you want to go for a vgg 16 you have 16 layers the dense net is going to have 121 layers so you just scale up the number of the layers uh, and you get a more and more efficient and a complex deep neural network model so network scaling is quite possible in deep learning and then the last one is general intelligence so our aim whole and soul uh, 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 purpose is to impart uh, the human level of intelligence to the machine that you are working with so this general intelligence can be imparted to your machine by a deep learning algorithms and deep neural networks which is going to be helpful to your your machine in the applications like computer vision nlp etc more such applications that we will be seeing today so all these four chief characteristics makes Uh, deep learning a uh, deep learning algorithm and deep neural network for very very important in uh, today's era uh, and uh, it helps with uh, giving a uh, human like intelligence towards your machine that you're going to work with so these are the basic deep learning characteristics that i wanted to list down for you now we are going to see uh, applications of deep uh, learning uh, there are many uh, if i want to classify it properly then i want to give them the subheadings as deep learning application in computer vision deep learning application in nlp deep learning application in reinforcement learning and we are going to see them each one of them in detail separately i mean there are certain sub applications of it that we are going to see so my first task is to pick up computer vision applications of deep learning so when i talk about computer vision applications of deep learning the first application that i am going to work with is image classification now as the name suggest the input to this particular model is going to be large amount of images and you are going to train your model by uh, labeled data of images and at the end what you are going to do is give a test image and you ask your model to classify it and now that's how an image classification works so the input of the neural network is pictures or the images and the output value is the probability what the uh, probability that the current sample belong to which category of on like which category on which the model has been trained generally the category with the highest probability is selected as the predicted category of the sample so this is similar to a normal uh, classification problem of machine learning but here the data is completely different you are working with images and lots of images that means uh, data is going to be very very complex and very high in volume next second uh, sub category under computer vision comes with object detection so here automatic detection of the approximate location of a common object in a picture by an algorithm takes place and it is usually represented with a bounding box and it classifies the category of uh, category information of the object in the bounding box you will understand it better if i just explain you with the help of this particular picture so you could see this entire image has got various other objects inside it and you would like to detect each and every object separately so here you can see the bounded box is detecting and labeling it as a dog and then you have got a ball so the common object detection algorithms in deep learning are rcnn fast rcnn faster rcnn mask rcnn ssd and yolo series so these are some names of deep learning algorithms that you use in object detection application next under computer vision application 
comes as semantic segmentation. So, uh, under semantic segmentation, we automatically segment and identify the content of the picture. Okay. Now, we can understand semantic segmentation as classification of each and every pixel and we would try to analyze the category information of each pixel. So, we are trying to basically understand uh, separate separate uh, pixel groups of the image and trying to make sense out of it. That is called as semantic segmentation. Next is video understanding. 3D video understanding task you are uh, see when I talk about video apart from your images that play uh, rapidly inside a video you have got a temporal dimension also that is with uh, it is dependent on time. So, 3D video understanding task with temporal dimension information uh, is a part of video understanding application. Common task would be to classify the video, to understand what is going on in a video that is behavior detection and to understand what is this video about and subject extraction. And common models are C3D, TSN, DOVF and TSLSTM. These are all the common uh, models under video understanding application of computer vision. Next is image generation. Now, you really want to generate lot, lot of data uh, by itself create data. So, for that we require certain image generation applications where you want to increase your training size of images. So, here in this image generation application, it learns the distribution of real pictures and samples. Now, what happens? This particular thing you would be learning in autoencoder where one part of the model is going to automatically generate fake images and other part of the model is going to detect whether the image generated is matching with the original image or it is still classified as fake and you want to work on it. That you are going to see in detail later. So, here image generation it learns the distribution of real pictures and samples from the learned distribution to obtain highly realistic generated pictures. Models are GAN series and VAE series variational autoencoders and uh, generative adversarial network series. The picture effect produced by latest GAN model has reached to a level that if you uh, AI generated picture or GAN generated picture you were not able to differentiate it with the real picture no? that is the power of image generation in today's world. And you can see here this is a model generated sale, um, image you can you cannot identify that this is a fakely generated image it is not a real dog ok. So, that is about image generation. Next is NLP natural language uh, processing application the very first under subcategory is machine translation. So, before 2016 based on statistical machine translation models which were also the technology used by Google's translation system NLP came into picture. In November 2016 Google has launched Google neural machine translation uh, which is based on sequence to sequence model. And for the very first time the direct translation technology uh, from the source uh, like from the source language to the target language from transferring from you know translating from one machine to another ma machine uh, translating from one language to another uh, language by a model it was realized with an improvement of 50 to 90 percent and some algorithms that you would use in machine translation that is translating from one language to another language automatically are sequence to sequence BERT, GPT and GPT-2. Now, coming to the second subcategory chatbots you are all familiar with it this is the mainstream task of NLP and machines they try to interpret your sentences they try to understand uh, what is that sentence mean try to understand semantic of that sentence and try to respond to, uh, the machine tries to respond to you and satisfy to all your queries. So, these days we all use those chatbots the basic fundamental concept here is NLP where the machines automatically learn to talk to humans provide satisfactory responses uh, to our simple human demands. This particular thing is efficiently used in all computer uh, customer service applications today uh, and almost all entertainment systems and smart homes. Next is reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning if I want to talk in a layman uh, language it is simply like a robo that we are going to you know robo how it thinks, how it views the uh, uh, scenario just like a human. So, this is all about reinforcement learning. The first uh, sub application under DAN comes and comes as virtual games. Virtual game platforms can both train 
the reinforcement see reinforcement learning is a different stream overall where the machine learns by making mistake so you are training and testing under the same roof so virtual game platforms can both train and test reinforcement learning algorithms they avoid interference from irrelevant factors while minimizing the cost of experiments uh, virtual gaming platforms include open ai uh gym open ai universe open ai robo school etc and the algorithms that go under these applications are dqn a3c a2c and ppo these are all the algorithms that go under virtual games i'm just giving you a brief overview on what it is and uh, the second one is robotics i need not explain you what robotic mean and uh, the control of robo in real environment definitely had made a lot of progress with the advent of computer vision and deep learning models uh, today us berkeley lab has made a lot of progress in areas of imitation learning meta learning and few shot learning uh, in the field of robotics and you this this particular uh, uh field has made a lot of achievements in robo applications uh, by making use of deep learning technology next is uh, you all are uh, like this is quite famous these days about autonomous driving that is self driving cars or self driving machines you know an application of reinforcement learning this is a wonderful application of reinforcement learning and in in today's uh, era it is quite very popular and a lot of companies like bedu uber and uh, google they have invested into this and apollo from bedu has begun trial operations in beijing wuhan etc and they are all being very successful so this is one area of uh, application of reinforcement learning where it is going very much uh, popular so this was about uh, fundamentals of deep learning and its application in our next topic we are going to see what are all the various frameworks of deep learning thank you